Let's talk about the symptoms that come along with brain inflammation. So a lot of these are psychological, depression, anxiety, ADHD, and then some memory loss disorders like dementia or Alzheimer's disease, or you could have Parkinson's disease. And then also the traumatic brain injury and concussion are all in this area of brain inflammation. And then you could also possibly have an autoimmune condition of your brain, but these are all encompassed and could cause all kinds of these symptoms just from the inflammation in the brain causing an imbalance of the neurotransmitters and making signals not go how they're supposed to. And also messing with the brain waves and making them not work appropriately, leading to all the plethora of these symptoms that I just talked about. So let's talk about what is causing this brain inflammation. So there are several different things that can happen to cause this. One could be is you hit your head. Maybe you just hit your head once and you got one concussion. Or you hit your head and you didn't know you had a concussion, you just blacked out, you just hit it hard. Or you got in a car accident and just jostles it real quick. That could be the beginning of that inflammatory process in the brain. And this could lead to all those symptoms that we just talked about. It also could be caused by a simple thing as aging and your progesterone decreasing. So progesterone is our anti-inflammatory hormone. So if we start not having that as much, especially in women, you're not having that anti-inflammatory effect anymore. And that could be a big reason why people could start having anxiety, depression, sleep disorders, memory issues, et cetera, is just from the decrease of the progesterone. Also an imbalance of the cortisol. So being stressed all the time or having long-term stress or a big stressor that has come into your life causes that imbalance and it never gets back. That could be a piece of the brain inflammation. You could be eating a food that's causing an inflammatory process. That could be it. Or you have a bug hanging on your gut that's not supposed to be there. Or you have a chronic infection hanging out in your body. Or exposure to pesticides and herbicides that you have a reaction to. Glyphosate, et cetera. You're getting an idea. So a lot of things are bombarding our brains and causing inflammation and leading to our body, our brains becoming leaky. And then... That's making all the stuff that's not supposed to get in our brain even get worse. So a lot of different causes. That's why you really need to go to a doctor to figure out what is really causing my brain inflammation or to really diagnose if brain inflammation could be a cause of the symptoms you're experiencing. Let's talk about how some people are being treated inappropriately, especially if they have this inflammatory process. Many times, let's say someone has depression, they're going to be put on Prozac, which is going to increase their serotonin levels. Maybe. They could feel better because they have more serotonin, but it's not really addressing the real problem. Maybe they do have decreased serotonin. Maybe they did some neurotransmitter testing, which we do in my field, and they saw that there's a decrease of serotonin. They're like, hey, we need to boost your serotonin. So they give you Prozac or they give you a natural supplement of some sort, like 5-HTP, et cetera, but they're not going after the inflammatory process. So they're not going to get all the way there. Or they're going to have to keep on taking more medication and more medication to start feeling better. Or they get no results at all from the treatment prescribed because you're not going after this inflammatory process. And in my experience, at least 90% of people with psychological disorders have some type of inflammation related to their condition. So you can't just give a medication to increase a certain neurotransmitter to take away depression. Or this goes along with anxiety. They give you a medication to increase GABA in your brain to calm the brain down. Again, that's just symptomatic, not treating the real cause of what's going on. And with anxiety, a big piece too is you get this backup of glutamate in your brain when your brain's inflammatory because it messes with the enzymes that help you break down glutamate. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So your brain is just always on fire. So you can understand why I said anxiety, ADHD, sleep disorders is because the brain is just overstimulated and glutamate is the culprit, but you're just giving them GABA. But really what we need to do is eliminate glutamate, do treatments to help with that, and also decrease the inflammatory process that's happening in the brain. Or let's say you're on an antidepressant or you're on a sleep med, and all you really do is need progesterone because your progesterone is low. So there's just a few examples that how people are not being treated appropriately because they're overlooking this inflammatory process that's happening in the brain. Let's say someone comes into my office and they're experiencing depression, anxiety, or ADD, et cetera. How do I really find out if inflammation of the brain could be related to their condition? What I do is I ask a series of several different questions to review a systems really 
to see how their body is functioning and see if they have an inflammatory process going on in their body. And when I see that there is an inflammatory process happening, they do have brain inflammation. You really don't have inflammation in just one area. So let's say you have an autoimmune disease, for example, like rheumatoid arthritis. It's not just in the joints. It's also going to be in the brain. Let's say I see that someone has all kinds of all these digestive issues. I'm going to see that they have a leaky gut, they have a leaky brain, they also have inflammation in their brain. There isn't a specific diagnosis. I mean, we could check inflammatory markers, but those aren't perfect too, because you could just have inflammation in your brain and not have it anywhere in your body. But I haven't seen it really just inflammation in the body and not in the brain. It just doesn't really happen. A lot of these inflammatory processes cross into the brain and cause a big problem. So it's just asking detailed questions to really identify this. Obviously, if I order some blood work and I see that they have elevated sedrate, C-reactive protein, they have elevated glutamate levels, I'm going to be like, yeah, you have brain inflammation. We need to dive into this. Let's talk about how I treat brain inflammation. So a big thing is I'm going to find out the cause of the inflammation. That's the main goal, which can be various like we just talked about, right? So it could be related to the gut. It could be related to the microbiome in there chronic infections, heavy metals, toxic exposures, maybe it's just injury to the brain, et cetera. So treatment is going to be varied based on identifying the cause. But let's talk about just some specific anti-inflammatory nutrients and herbs that we could take. My favorite anti-inflammatory herb is Boswellia. It's like specific for the brain. It helps systemically but it is so powerful on the brain. There's studies actually showing it to be just as powerful as taking prednisone to decrease inflammation in the brain. So it's a very powerful natural treatment with very little side effects that can be great. Curcumin or turmeric, that's really great too to help decrease inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acids, especially high in EPAs and DHEAs are great. Like I said, I like to give progesterone if someone's low, but even if someone's not low, and I really see that someone has a lot of inflammation in their brain, sometimes I'm going to give them progesterone because it's such a good, what we call it a neurosteroid. It's going to decrease that inflammation in the brain. And this can be really good on decreasing the inflammation where we're treating all the causes that are underlying, and then we wean them off of their progesterone, but it can really help things work appropriately while we're treating all these causes. Obviously, most of the time I do see people have gut issues when I see some brain inflammation going on. So I'm going to go after that. I'm going to use some glutamine. I'm going to do good probiotics. I'm going to remove the bad bugs that are hanging in there. That's very common. I'm going to use something like quercetin to decrease the histamine responses. And many times I'm going to maybe give digestive enzymes to help them absorb the nutrients right, to help everything work appropriately. So that's a quick rundown of some of the treatments that you could do to help with brain inflammation. But really, it's not like all you do is this thing. You need to really find out the cause, go to an integrative doctor that actually knows how to do that, and then you're going to get the great results. So if you think brain inflammation could be related to your depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, ADHD, et cetera, give my office a call. Visit my website, integrativemedica.com. Find my phone number there. Give my receptionist a call, and you can set up an appointment with me or some of my other great doctors that approach the same way that I do. You also could just go to the book online and just set it up online. And you don't have to be here in person to see me. I can see you all over the world. We could do a virtual visits for you. If you want to learn more about mental illness or autoimmune diseases, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.